So there has been a dramatic rise in online pet scams over the course of the pandemic, including one Washington state woman who lost $2,400 while trying to buy a puppy. A CBS News viewer who heard the woman's story earlier this month was motivated to help. Anna Werner explains. Just something to start you out with. So. Thanks. This is what Jeannie Dixon of Spokane, Washington had been hoping for, a Newfoundland puppy to ease the pain of losing her 19-year-old daughter Charlene last year. Charlene was going to change the world. But earlier this month, she told us she'd been scammed, sending over $2,400 to the operators of this website for a puppy named Ben, only to lose it all. I blame myself because it was a stupid thing to do. The BBB says online scammers have stolen more than $2.8 million from Americans this year for pets never received. But in this case... I saw your guys' article. Local breeder Becky Deacon saw our story on Facebook. It just made my heart ache um, reading it. It was just horrible. She decided to give one of her Newfoundland puppies to Dixon and with help from CBS Spokane affiliate KREM reached out to her. With the way that 2020 has been and the world is right now, I felt like we needed something good to come out of this. And so I just knew that that was going to be the right thing to do. And for Jeannie Dixon. It's completely overwhelming that people gave me grace for losing all that money for a dog. But like I told her, Charlene was going to change the world. And she just changed the world for me because of this article. Anna Werner, CBS News, Berkeley, California. Janie Dixon named her new puppy Maggie. And the stress and life changes during the pandemic has led many of us to pack on the pounds. The American Academy of Pediatrics is raising concerns about children's nutrition and physical activity during this difficult time. Naomi Richam has more on what parents need to know. The Adair family is adapting to many changes in the pandemic, from virtual learning to canceled sports and activities. They're working hard to stay active and eat right. A lot of family walks, online school, it made it a little bit harder um, to prepare meals. So we um, have our instant pot pressure cooker that's um, been helping us make healthier meals. It's been a challenge for many families. Dr. Lisa Denike is a pediatrician with Kaiser Permanente. We're seeing a lot of weight gain in children of all ages, um, which I think is mirroring a lot of what we're seeing in our parents and families. Dr. Denike says we just don't burn as many calories in front of screens all day. Being at home all day lends itself to constant snacking or grazing. The other is eating is a coping skill. It releases the feel-good hormones in our brains when we eat. New research shows an estimated 19% of children and adolescents in the U.S. are obese, which can have long-term health implications. Obesity lends itself to a lot of health care issues uh, in young adults and actually even in older teens. We're seeing now a lot of type 2 diabetes, heart problems, kidney problems, high blood pressure. Dr. Denaik suggests and parents schedule sleep and wake times, meals during the day and 30 to 60 minutes of sweaty physical activity daily. And they need to be good role models, something Joanna is embracing. Doing kinds of activities as a family, I think, is really important because they see the parents um, wanting to get outside and take that walk um, and be healthy. Setting a good example and teaching resilience during a challenging time. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. Like adults, children and adolescents with obesity are at an increased risk of severe COVID-19 disease. And obesity isn't just affecting children. Nearly three quarters of adults in the U.S. are overweight or obese. That's according to a new report from the CDC's National Center for Health Statistics. The data also shows 31% of adults were overweight and 42% were obese in 2018, including 9% with severe obesity. Obesity was much lower among Asian adults than black, white, or Hispanic adults. And finally, there's one day of the year you may want to avoid having an operation. A new study from the UCLA reveals patients are more likely to die if it's their surgeon's birthday. The findings are based on data from over 980,000 surgeries performed on older adults. Nearly 7% of those who underwent a procedure on their doctor's birthday died within 30 days, compared to 5.5% on other days.